Hello, I'm Mark. Uh, thanks again for joining me on this journey. Tonight I'm on the long road to Shifnal. Shifnal Comedy Club near Telford. It's not a gig that I've done before. Um, from what I understand, it's only been running for about a year. Um, but tonight is exactly three years since my very first gig. Um, so I'm excited about this. I'm doing an opening 20 for them. A little bit nervous and apprehensive because the promoter, when he booked me for this, um, did pre-warn me that in the 11 months that the gig has been running, he hasn't really managed to get a complete grip on what sort of stuff the audience is up for uh, and what they like. And even within a set, he said that, that they can go for some jokes, um, but then others will get absolutely nothing. So. I'm a little bit anxious to kind of find out how they're going to be with my material. Uh, also, I haven't gigged since last Friday when I did the gong show in Stockton on Tees. And I do feel a bit like, how on earth am I going to do 20 minutes tonight when I couldn't even manage five last Friday? Um, so, I think it's going to be really important that I spend some time on the journey just running through my material, going through my set, making it so that I know exactly what's coming next and that I'm happy with the order that I'm doing things. Um, because if that happens, then I feel much more comfortable being able to go off script and if there are things going on in the crowd or if they're not loving it as much as I hope, then I'll be able to address that or talk to them or go off script and uh, hopefully make it a bit more about them. I think it's really it's something that I've been trying to do uh, over the, certainly over the last year, is get to the point where I am that comfortable being able to speak to the crowd and address them and I think it's one of those things where it's kind of high risk and, and high reward because comedy crowds can smell it, they know when you're saying things that are just for them, they know when uh, it's absolutely off the cuff and usually that gets a better response than jokes that they know are pre-planned. If they feel like you're saying it for the very first time or you feel that it's about them then audiences tend to like that. Um, but it does mean that you have to be absolutely comfortable with what you're doing material-wise so that you can dip in and out and rejoin it and pick it up and not be too thrown. When I first tried to do it, when I first tried to go off script or talk to the audience, I'd find that when I'd kind of exhausted that avenue and wanted to get back to my material, I'd be a bit lost about where I was supposed to be. Or, And it's also knowing the right time in which to go away from a go away from a joke or go away from a story because sometimes you can absolutely kill the momentum that you've built up and you find that when you do come back to it it doesn't get the laugh that you were expecting or the laugh that you were hoping for um, because you've kind of gone too much away and the audience isn't on board with what you were saying so it's a skill that I'm still learning I'm still trying to get better at uh, I did some stuff this summer when I was up in Edinburgh we did a show called Jokers in the Pack with uh, a lot of good friends of mine where four of us each night would go and do a show do 15 minutes each on an hour-long show um, and I did quite a lot of going on first and although I wasn't strictly speaking emceeing the gig I still just did my 15 minutes and then went off and introduced the next act um, I did kind of do a bit more crowd work and try and build the audience up for the night and just get them on board in the way that an MC would and it's so important the MC is so important to a successful comedy night because they can either break it or absolutely make it uh, and a really skillful MC is absolutely the most important and, and the best thing that you can have for a comedy night because the audience then feels safe in whatever act you bring on they uh, they kind of trust that you're going to be you're going to be good you're going to be funny um, equally a bad MC can not really set the night up particularly well um, and make it far more difficult for the acts then to go on and do their thing so um, yeah, tonight I'm going to go on opening act, as I say. I'm going to make sure that I know my stuff in terms of my material um, so that if I do find that the audience is, as I said, a little bit unpredictable and I do need to go away from what I was planning on talking about, that I'm absolutely comfortable doing that and that I can find my way back into the material 
afterwards and then hopefully it will be a more successful gig than I had last Friday. Another stop at a service station. These become my favorite places to hang out as a comedian. Um, we are constantly kind of stopping to. Uh, I was told very early on, I can't remember who by, I can't remember which comedian it was, but somebody said to me really early on, every comedian has a favorite service station. Um, so I'm, I'm really interested to know if that's true actually. I'm pretty sure it is, because I'm sure that um, comedians have place they, they they do do a lot of the same routes over and over again you do get used to kind of stopping in certain places um, my favorite is Lee Delamere on the M4 that has always been my favorite uh, place to stop until there was one night where I, I was heading to Bristol to do a show it was a competition show um, and 20 minutes after I set out from home I realised that my phone being plugged into my charger just was not uh, charging at all and I only had about 15% battery and was dependent on my phone to actually be able to find this gig. So um, that was not a lot of fun. I managed to stop and buy another charger. That didn't work either because I realised it was just the point that wasn't working. Unable to find a map anywhere or buy a map anywhere. So eventually I had to buy a charger that plugs into the wall and then sit on the floor in Lee Delamere services uh, with my phone plugged into the wall, desperately hoping that my phone would get enough battery for me to be able to uh, get to the gig and find my way there. Uh, eventually, after about a 45 minute wait of looking like I was effectively begging for electricity, um, I did manage to get, I think it was something like 15% battery on the phone, uh, which took me into Bristol and I, <laughs> I found the gig with 1% battery left on my phone and one minute before the gig was due to start. Um, so that was pretty much cutting it pretty fine. Um, however, however, I did win the competition that night. Um, so Lee Delamere still can remain my favorite service station. Um, that's not where I am now. I don't even know. I don't even know where I am now. Somewhere on the M6. Um, let's see if the facilities here can justify a brand new favourite. So I'm just back from my gig in Telford or Shifnal, just outside of Telford. And um, I bailed out of making a video as soon as I came off yet again uh, because it would have meant filming in the pub car park, which I just felt was a bit too odd. Um, so I've had my little drive home. Uh, it was one of these nights that's growing in popularity where you buy uh, your ticket for the comedy and I'll get a curry as part of the deal. Um, so I got a free curry before the show. I don't often eat before I go on stage, but I'm glad I did because it was absolutely delicious. Um, only a small crowd tonight, um, but they were lovely and very, very warm audience. Uh, I find it weird. Um, those of you who saw my last video will know that last Friday I was performing uh, in a theatre gig to about 300 people. Um, whereas tonight it was only a handful of people, but I just enjoyed it so much more. They were they were so lovely uh, and up for the night. It was largely made by the MC, a comedian called Nick Clark, who very quickly realised that he couldn't just treat it like a normal gig. Um, and he obviously referenced just how small the audience was. Very, very quickly he had learned every single person in the audience's name. Uh, which really brought them into the night and made them feel like it was special and just for them. He also took the quite unusual step of, uh, after I'd been on as the opener, normally we'd have a break, but rather than going to a break, he just kept everyone sat where they were and bought a round of drinks for the entire audience, which, um, which those of you who are more cynical might think is a cheap trick uh, or a very expensive trick, uh, but actually... It, what it did 
was made it feel like everyone was mates on a night out uh, all together as part of a group and it really helped the atmosphere and just uh, and just made people feel uh, very comfortable in each other's company uh, and I think that was a really good thing to do um, and I got a pint out of it so thanks for that Nick. Um, the other thing that I did tonight was uh, when I was originally making the documentary, I interviewed a guy called Oliver Double, who used to be a comedian in the 90s and now is a lecturer in stand-up comedy at the University of Kent. And his top tip that he gave me was to always record yourself, record every set that you do and make sure you listen back to it um, because you can always find things um, that you can tweak and make better. And he said that even if you have like a horrible gig, it's, it's so important to make sure that you record it and listen back. So I did that tonight and on the drive home, I've just been listening back to it. And uh, there are some things, there's some bits that I haven't done for a little while and there are some bits in there that I just think I need to work on and, and a few things that I could phrase a little bit differently. It doesn't mean making big changes to it, uh, not changing any of the punchlines, but just in the setups, getting them absolutely tight and phrasing things in a slightly different way that I think will really help the punchlines to land a lot better. So I'm glad that I did that. Uh, it just goes to show that no matter how long you've been doing a piece of material for, you can still improve, you can still make changes and there's always going to be little things that you can add or take out or just just really worth continuing to work on your material and make sure you get it as good as it possibly can be. Um, so yeah, all in all, uh, a lovely night. Well, that is until I took the drive home and I'm pretty sure that on the way home I got flashed by a speed camera. So um any money that I've earned out of tonight is is probably going to be gone quite quickly. And that free curry that I got uh, has just become a whole lot more expensive. But um, as I said, this is my th three year anniversary of comedy. And that's the first time that that's happened. So um, that's not too bad a record, I suppose. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it for this one. Uh, if you do fancy coming along for the journey on the next gig that I do, um, please do subscribe to the channel and I will keep you up to date with all of, uh, all of the things that I get up to along the long road. The long road that, as it turns out, is full of speed cameras. Um, thanks ever so much for watching. I'll see you next time.